Welcome back. In the previous part, I looked at the equity curves that were produced by the best performing parameter values in this research study to identify which performance metrics are best. But I explained how looking at just the equity curves of those best performing parameters is not statistically significant enough to give us the information we require. Here, the component of random chance simply plays too big a part to be useful. Instead, we have to consider all of the results, not just the best ones. So let's take a closer look at this. So the way initially that I thought it was best to perform this process in order to ascertain the best performance metric I wanted to compare the in-sample optimization values with those obtained in the out-of-sample walk forward and to see how well they were correlated. And the more correlation there is between them, then the more predictive that particular performance metric is of future results. So let me now show you exactly how I did that. So as I said before, the yellow data is that from the optimization and the blue data on the right is from the walk forward. So again, let's use CAGR over maximum drawdown as our example. So if we choose the metrics that were obtained from the optimization for each of the parameter values and we come along and plot that against the metrics for CAGR over max drawdown for the walk forward phase, we can now plot that on a scatter chart as shown here. So just to explain now, the x-axis represents the values from the optimization and the y-axis represents those values from the walk forward phase. And so if we focus on just one of these points, we can see the parameter values that provided us with a value of 1.22 in the optimization, then went on to provide us with a value of 1.8 in the walk forward. Now, at first sight, this looks like a relatively good correlation. It's not brilliant, but it's okay. So there's a huge cluster of points down the left hand side here where a negative value in the optimization also produced a negative value in the walk forward. So that's promising. This would help us to avoid choosing those parameters to trade. And then gradually as the values increase, in the optimization, they also appear to increase in the walk forward. But to achieve a quantifiable way of measuring this, we can simply add a trend line and display the R squared value, which you can see here. So the R squared value for CAGR over max drawdown is 0.36. So the idea that I initially had was to go through this process for each and every one of the performance metrics. So for example, if I now quickly want to do this for one of the coefficient based metrics, let's say the R value, Again, we get a chart that looks quite different here, actually. So this is because of the different nature of this performance metric. But to quantifiably compare these, we also need to produce our trend line, display the R squared value, which in this case is coming out at 0.67. So significantly better than the R squared valued for compound annual growth rate over maximum drawdown. And I do like this fact that we have a relatively large cluster of points towards the right upper segment. 
meaning that if we have a good value coming out of the in-sample test, this is quite predictive of obtaining a good value in the out-of-sample walk forward, which of course is what we want. And another point to take note of here is that for all of the performance metrics, there did seem to be this positive correlation there. To different degrees, yes, but the fact that that correlation is there, I think is also a good indication that overfitting has not occurred. If overfitting had taken place during the optimization, then the correlation would either be much weaker or non-existent, meaning that there was no predictive power from the optimization into that walk forward. But the fact that we have got that is good. However, it was then that I hit a stumbling block. Just through interest, I decided to look at another metric, which was purely the maximum drawdown value. So no reward aspect at all, just the risk element of drawdown. And let me show you what happened. So this is the correlation of maximum drawdown in the optimization compared with maximum drawdown in the walk forward. We add our trend line. And here you can see there's an exceptionally good correlation compared to the other metrics. So in this case, nearly 0.8. So hopefully you can see the significance of this. This maximum drawdown metric has no component of reward built into it. It's purely based on risk. And so it doesn't give us any indication whatsoever of the profit or the alpha that we're able to take out of the market for each of those different parameter values. And so for me, this was now a moment of realization in that simply measuring the correlation between two performance metrics does not tell you how effective those performance metrics are. So although this approach of looking at the correlation provided me with some great confirmation that overfitting hadn't occurred, it didn't answer the primary question that I needed an answer to from the research. And so unfortunately at this point, I had to go back to the drawing board and rethink how to ascertain this. Okay, so I'm about halfway through presenting the results back to you. And as I said before, I need to split this over two episodes. So that's all we've got time for this week. But in the next episode, I'll conclude the research feedback. And as you'll see, I do eventually obtain the results I needed to identify which metrics do work best. So to make sure you don't miss out on that, subscribe below to get notified when that episode is released. And so until next time, trade safe.